Welcome to the show, Meeting Interesting People. Today, my guest, uh, Miyuki Tsurutani and John Tyson. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. So we give our viewers first um, some sketch of the portraits of uh, artists like you. And I would call you as a musician's magicians. <laughs> so um, Miyuki is originally from Japan. Yes, sir. So you, you graduated um, Japanese conservatory. Yes, Osaka. Osaka, yeah. 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 So and Miyuki played harpsichord. Yes. So that was your major. Um, Piano. Major, well, uh, no, uh, my major was musicology, ah. but uh, the musicology students uh, have to uh, learn historical instruments. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, that's why I studied the recorder and Oh, then recorder too. Recorder and oh. then harpsichord. Oh, okay. And piano, right? Yeah, pian yeah, piano. piano. And then I, I, I know that you play organ also, right? Organ, uh, I started uh, five years ago, six mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, yeah, because some of my acquaintances, they were at the concert where you perform an organ. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so they remember that. So, and John, of course, John is a Boston recorder orchestra director mm -hmm. and participated in tremendous amount of groups you mm -hmm. played. Um, mm -hmm. So, how did you start with music in general? Like, when you were a child or? Yeah, the, um, uh, grew up in a very small town uh -huh. in, in the country and the only music program that was available was the school band. Uh -huh. So, I played clarinet in the band. Oh. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. Liked it. It went off to a, a music conservatory a, uh -huh. as a clarinet major. Ah. And uh, you know, played in the band, played in the orchestra, played in the jazz band, played some sax, a little, wow. little bit of everything. <coughs> but as I was mm. when I was there, I discovered recorder mm. because we, I had seen you know recorders in schools, but I had right, never right. really thought about it. Right. And I met some people at the conservatory who were, were good recorder players and uh, got interested in, in the instrument, mm -hmm. uh, got interested in early repertoires because mm. it was something we kind of studied in our history books, Yes, but it was like, you know, it, they didn't really bring it alive. Mm. And I was just blown away at how much repertoire there is. So mm -hmm. we do a lot of we do a lot of contemporary music too. Right, we do right, a little right. bit of everything, but we do a lot of early repertoires partly because there's just so much, mm -hmm. and it's so amazingly beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, it's like an actor; they might do a lot of different things, right. but they usually want to do Shakespeare because oh, yeah. it's so great, <laughs> right? Or Chekhov. Or Chekhov. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So, uh, so I got really seduced away from clarinet mm. because I liked the recorder so much and because I liked the, the variety, the richness of the repertoires. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and what about the Renaissance? That's the, mm -hmm. uh, another group or? Yeah, I, so I run a group uh, called Renaissance. We have some CDs yeah, and things. Yeah, that's right so here, that's right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, which c includes string players, violin, cello, it includes dancers a lot of the time. Uh, and it's, um, it, it's a funny group. It's really kind of my, one of my favorite things in, in my whole life to do because it's um, kind of what, uh, we're primarily Renaissance music. We, we do some other things, but mostly Renaissance music. And in Renaissance music, uh, it, it, Renaissance music is a funny kind of middle ground in mm. Western music. Mm. It is unassailably high art. Mm. You know, it's the age of Leonardo, right. it's the age of Shakespeare. You have as great music and composers as any other period. But it, because it was their living repertoire, they didn't feel like they were doing classical music. Right. They were doing the music right then daily and music. there, the daily music. <laughs> yeah. And so Renaissance music has this funny quality of being incredibly high art mm. and popular music kind of all at the same time. Merge. And I, one of the things that really seduced me to, to playing uh, uh, Renaissance music more and more is that I could play great chamber music mm. by great composers right. and improvise at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's not what we think about in mm. a lot of our classical music. But you have in Renaissance music a kind of freedom mm -hmm. uh, to express yourself and to be individuals in very much the way you would be in a pop band, mm -hmm. even though you're playing kind of 
art music. Right, right. So, and of course you're teaching. I teach at the New England Conservatory of Music and, mm -hmm. and travel around as a mm -hmm. teacher. And, and I lecturer. know it's, it's coming tour, right? To Europe, you said? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we're leaving next week. Uh, yeah. We run an a annual workshop, recorder workshop in Tuscany in mm, Italy. Nice. And uh, usually do other concerts uh, in France, Spain, Germany, Italy. So. So, and Japan often. So, yeah. Well, yeah. So how much interest here um, mm -hmm. to play recorders? Like, uh, do you have a lot of students? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. It's, um, and, and it's really more all the time. It's be becoming uh, a generation or two ago, people only knew recorder as a school instrument. Right, right, right. right. And now there are well-known jazz recorder players. Uh -huh. right? Everybody knows the Beatles played recorder, right. the Rolling Stones played recorder. It's becoming a kind of normal part of our okay. Uh, okay. And, and composers are writing for recorders and orchestras more all the time so yeah well I know I, I actually met you like I think 20 years ago yeah, when you I were so. playing mm -hmm. for Renaissance dances right mm -hmm. and I was really yeah. missing Oh uh, yeah, Dennis, yeah Renaissance that, that was dances. a lot of fun to do yeah. 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 but recorder is probably the most played instrument in the entire world I see. because it's used for just all kinds of music in all repertoires and everything like that so. And we know that Miyuki has more talents because she uh, is an incredible cook. <laughs> I remember that period when you were sharing with us your cooking during the Renaissance dances. <laughs> <laughs> and even you have a website, right? Website yes. it's, it's in Japanese, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. 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 But you said some recipes in English, right? English, yes. So yes. I think we will add that um, website <laughs> and people can see um, we have some um, Arlington Japanese community or school, so they probably will be watching it and interested <laughs> to learn something. Yeah. It's a big good cooking site in Japan. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, I think we will start present some music you play. Uh, and before, you just can give a little um, history of this display. Mm -hmm. Well, these are some of our recorders. <laughs> uh, one of the fun things about recorder is if you can play one it's very easy to, to change around mm. right on you can do it on other instruments but a, a good trumpet player is not necessarily a good tuba player because uh -huh. you it's different muscle training right. but recorder where you're basically just blowing yeah it's a very easy instrument for beginners it's a very easy instrument for people to play all their lives just like mm. everybody could sing a little bit right, right? you can right. do that easily all the time so recorders because they're used all over the world and you can buy the really good plastic ones very cheaply it's the most played instrument in the world it's also the biggest family of instruments. There's mm -hmm. more different sizes of recorder than any other instrument. If you, if you think about it, if you looked at a couple of recorders and thought about it, and you see this mm -hmm. design here, mm -hmm. it might remind you of an organ pipe. Yes. It's the same. It does, yeah. Uh, the shape, sound producing mechanism shape, yeah. is, mm -hmm. is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And just like in organ, how many different sizes of organ pipes are, uh -huh. are there? You can do that with recorder. So I we see. only have 13 today, yeah. but for, we'll play the, the big so contrabass. How, how big is your collection? Soon. Oh gosh, we, because we play uh, like, like guitars, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you play rock, you have several different kinds of guitar. <laughs> if you play classical, you do different. If you're playing uh, old time blues, you have different guitars. Yeah. So, and recorders, uh, we, we usually buy whole sets of recorders. I see. So that if you're doing Renaissance, you have different ones than Baroque, <laughs> than, than Romantic, than modern, modern experimental designs. So we probably have 50 something handmade instruments at home. Okay, so, so tell us um, uh, before we, we start preparing um, for you to play live, just tell us um, um, what kind of music you will be playing. Just general and then you will mm -hmm. set you um, you will pref uh, like do some small presentation explanation mm -hmm. of each piece so we really I end up doing um, we have the pleasure of being able to do a lot of different kinds of repertoires mm -hmm. uh, from renaissance through through every everything that we uh, I play with a pop band called Universal Village mm -hmm. playing, playing recorder mic'd up mm -hmm hamming it up there and playing jazz and pop stuff like that. Uh, Renaissance does Renaissance music. Uh, I play with Baroque orchestras. 
We, uh, we play a lot of modern music that's written for us, a lot of experimental things and crazy things. So for those, you need several different sizes mm -hmm. for each repertoire. Okay. So we end up with an awful lot of different things. But we're going to play uh, Renaissance music today mm -hmm. because the Boston Recorder Orchestra plays right. mostly Renaissance music, pop right. music also. Uh, our group Renaissance plays Renaissance music. And, and partly because the Renaissance repertoire is so big. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of things. There's happy dance music. There's wild and crazy carnival songs. Yep. The, there's elegant church music and chamber music. So we're going to give you a little bit of, play a, maybe four or so duets of Renaissance music. And uh, one of the things we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, and you'll hear, is Renaissance music. In, in a way, it sounds normal. It just, mm. it, it's very pretty tunes, uses the same notes we do nowadays. But one thing's different in most of the music that we play and that we hear nowadays, there's usually a melody and mm. an accompaniment, mm -hmm. right? So if you hear a string quartet, very often the first violin's playing yeah. the main melody and everybody else is mm -hmm. kind of playing accompaniment. In recorder, uh, I mean, in Renaissance music, everybody gets to play the melody. Mm. It's a kind of composition called polyphony, many mm -hmm. voices. Mm -hmm. And what it is is something that's kind of, you could think of it as normal, you could think of it as outrageously radical, but the composer writes for everybody who's playing, he writes their own individual melody. Mm -hmm and magically it fits together. It's a little bit like having different soloists all playing together, but they knew what they were doing. Yeah. And it sounds wonderful, but if you listen to it, you realize, oh, she's telling the story this way and he's telling the story that way, and they might be playing a lot of the same notes and echoing each other, mm -hmm. but everybody has the freedom to be kind of what we would expect yeah, with a pop singer. Themselves. Everybody ha expresses their own personality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you hear this wonderful kind of kaleidoscope of different voices. Okay, so we're around. ready to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to play a lot of different yes. kinds of that. All so. right, thank you. We're ready for the concert. We do a lot of different kinds of music, but we'd like to play some Renaissance music for you today, partly because it's a huge and beautiful repertoire and partly because there's so, so many different things going on in here. We're going to play one short piece written by uh, Thomas Morley, uh, the composer for Queen Elizabeth I of England, and he's called this The Chase, and it kind of demonstrates what's going on in Renaissance music, that we're playing two different parts, but we both have the melody. There's not really just one melody and one accompaniment here. And in this chase, we literally chase each other. And you'll hear us saying sometimes the exactly same musical things at different times, one person running away, one person chasing, and vice versa. The chase. Instruments here, recorders are the biggest family of instruments of all, so we have a lot of different sizes that we can play with different sounds and different colors. And definitely the biggest family of instruments. 
we're going to play another Renaissance piece by one of the great composers of Western music, Orlando di Lasso. We, we don't know his name so much, but he wrote in all kinds of styles. This is actually a piece, um, a church piece, uh, Benedictus, and we're going to use, uh, because it's written for low voices, we're going to use low recorders on them. So the great bass and the contrabass recorder we use on here, and there's actually a couple of sizes even bigger than this one. Surprisingly, Simon and Garfunkel recorded this piece of Renaissance music. I'd like to give you an idea of kind of the, <clears throat> the wonderful rhythmic quality of Renaissance music. Uh, when I uh, first started playing Renaissance music, I was blown away by the complexity of the rhythms. They're writing basically songs all the time, but since they're writing very independent voices, you get these com combined rhythms that are more complicated than the vast majority of what you hear in most any other repertoire. Yeah. This is a funny piece. It starts off this way. Miyuki's part is. <laughs> great composer, really one of the greatest composers of, of all Western music, Josquin Desprez, wrote this. And he wrote just one melody. And he says, okay, you play your part. The second part, come in one note later, play exactly the same thing, one note higher. As if that's not complicated enough, he goes through some amazing rhythmic changes in both both parts imitating each other, getting more and more rhythmically complex. <laughs> Since we do all kinds of music, we'd like to play one contemporary piece for you by an uh, uh, esteemed co uh, composer, colleague of ours, uh, named Zürin Sieg. He's a young German composer, but he's traveled extensively in Africa, and a great deal of the music he writes 
for recorders and for other instruments, is inspired by traditional African music. You hear a lot of the same scales that would be used in African music and certainly African rhythms. This piece is called Umlanjana, which means the small stream. one more piece of Renaissance music, but a very different kind of music. We're going to do some dance music, and I'm going to bring out a new instrument here. So I'm taking a drum, and I have a different kind of recorder. There's many different kinds of recorders all over the world. Every single culture has some kind of recorder kind of instrument. This is a three-hole recorder, and it works like other recorders, you can get different notes by moving your fingers. But it can play more than three or four notes. Think of it like a trumpet with only three vowels. You get different notes by moving the fingers, but also by playing the overtone series, playing the harmonics. So you put it all together and with only three holes, and it leaves one hand free to do something else. And it's really a, a popular instrument all over the world. Uh, it's the national instrument of uh, Provence in the south of France, of the Basque peoples, of some Eastern European peoples, of some um, Pacific Island people. The, these, the flute and drum uh, in many different combinations is, um, is pretty widespread. And it was a very popular Renaissance instrument for popular music, court music. So we're going to play a, a dance. And even in the dance music, you'll hear that we're both playing our own independent melodies with different rhythms, and you can still dance to it. <laughs> 